Hi, Write Writers Cruise here. Thank you so much for joining me. In this Work Keys video, we are going to be looking at an assessment or a practice assessment called Work Keys Applied Math. And we're looking at a practice test created by the state of Ohio to help both adults and students do well on their Work Keys. And so um, this is a definitely a platform that you may want to use to practice work keys. Please keep in mind, right, writers, that if you're watching this video, um, math is not my subject area that I teach. And so we're really just going to review what you might see on the work keys math, but also get a chance to see um, what is available through Ohio. This is one of the best websites that I found um, as far as uh, practice. I'm going to go ahead and launch the test and hit continue. So we're going to go ahead and click on, you can click on the practice or the learner or a simulation if you want to simulate the testing environment. I'm going to click on the practice test and that way we don't really see the answer, but we see what's available. And so as you can see here, right writers, um, we have our question number one. Also keep in mind, watchers, that I will be jumping to you know, groups of questions, maybe question number one, then do question number five, and then 11. And I'll sort of jump because the work keys is set up to move you through different levels from level three all the way up to level seven. So this gives you sort of a taste of what the test would look like as a whole. So in this particular problem, we see obviously five answer choices. And the question asks, you are working for a florist that specializes in wedding, in weddings rather. You are preparing the flower arrangement orders for three weddings this weekend. The three weddings ordered 120 arrangements, 85 arrangements, and 46 arrangements. How many flower arrangements must you prepare? So you can sort of see this is a very simplistic math question, but notice how it focuses on in on a math problem involving the workplace or a work environment. And that's what you will notice on the work keys. Everything is centered on a problem involving the workplace or a workplace scenario. Now I'm going to jump to another question and I'm going to jump to question number five so we can take a look at that question. In this question, it says, on Monday, Sam has a collection of 88 MP3s on his MP3 player. He downloads another 22 MP3s throughout the week. How many MP3s does he have by the end of the week? And so this problem involves MP3 players, but also understanding that a work week or a week is from Monday through Friday, not including the weekend. So just something to think about as well. You know, if you're thinking about the week, Monday, or maybe you're thinking, well, the end of the week may be Sunday. And so maybe looking about looking at that and thinking about where might this question fall? Are we talking about Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday? So this is one of those questions where, um, again, we may see a difference based on what we uh, see in the question. And we want to make sure that we select the proper um, answer choice. Also remember, right writers, eliminating answer choices is huge, especially when you have five answer choices in front of you. I'm now going to jump to question number 11. And again, you will start to see how these questions begin to be, um, become more complicated. So in question number 11, it states, you work for a pet trainer who has asked you to create a rectangular pen for dog training purposes. You will use chicken coop wire to construct the sides of the pen. The pen is supposed to be 42.6 feet long and 28.5 feet wide. How many feet, how many feet of chicken coop wire are needed to form the pen? And so this is an interesting question. It involves measurement, but it also involves the understanding of the difference between perimeter and area. So just keep that in mind, right, writers. And again, notice how this has to do with workplace, a workplace problem or a workplace situation. 
Now we're going to jump to question number 15. And for those of you who have an aversion to fractions, um, I encourage you to let go of that distaste that you have for fractions and begin to embrace fractions. This one states, you work as a residential painter. A customer wants two tables and eight chairs painted using one coat of the same color paint. Each table requires one and five eighths quarts of paint and each chair requires two third quarts of paint or two thirds quarts of paint. How many total quarts of paint should you bring to paint this furniture? Again, five answer choices um, and remove any issues that you have with fractions, right, writers? Jumping to the next question. We're going to jump to question number 21 now. Notice how the complexity continues. You work for a carpet cleaning service and must shampoo the carpet in the small banquet room of a local hotel. The dimensions of the room are 200 feet by 180 feet. Each bottle of carpet shampoo can be used to shampoo 320 square feet of carpet. How many bottles of shampoo do you need to complete the job? Notice how this question has more to do with area rather than perimeter, but it's not asking you for the area. It's asking you for how many bottles of shampoo do you need to complete the job? So that said, right writers, we are now moving on to our next question. So I'm going to jump to question number 25. It is known that when a certain liquid freezes into ice, its volume increases by 8%. Which of these expressions is equal to the volume of this liquid that freezes to make 1,750 cubic inches of ice? Please keep in mind, right writers, that you will um, have access to a calculator or a calculator on the work keys, and also you will have a conversion chart distributed to you, jumping to another question. And now we move on to question number, um, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. And so I jump from 25, we're going to go to 29, and then jump to 31, and then 33. So question number 29, it states that you work in the shipping department of an organic food company and need to calculate the net weight of a jar of raspberry preserves. The jar is a cylinder. It has an inside diameter of 1.5 inches and an inside height of 4.75 inches. The raspberry preserves weigh 0.53 ounces per cubic inch. What is the net weight rounded to the nearest hundredth of the jar of raspberry preserves. And so here we have pretty much a question of volume and we have our example followed by our answer choices. Now I'm jumping to question number 31. So jumping to question 31, it states you work for a waste removal company. The trailer of one of your dr dump trucks is 10 feet wide, 15 feet long, and 6.5 feet high. If a ton of debris equals 200 cubic feet, how many trucks are needed to cart away 45 tons of debris from a demolition site? And so again, taking a look at the answer choices, taking your time, and then also remembering Right, writers, that some of these questions, when I see how many trucks are needed to cart away, so sometimes when I see things like 9, 10, um, and then we've got 60, 93, 139, um, oftentimes when a student thinks, oh, well, I have this truck, but this truck is only going to have one ton, and so maybe I only need nine tons of tr nine trucks rather than 10 tons of truck or 10 trucks to haul away this debris. But just keep in mind that extra ton still needs to go. And so you're not going to have nine trucks. Let's pretend that nine and 10 are between the two answer choices that you need the 10 trucks to be able to haul that one extra ton that needs to be taken away. 
So watch out for questions like that, even with the shampoo about, you know, how many um, bottles of shampoo you need. Um, it's not like, well, I have five and a half. I need five and a half, um, you know, shampoo bottles. So I'm going to go ahead and pick five or five and a quarter. No, you'll want to round up because you need the shampoo to carpet the um, room. So you need to go with the answer choice of six rather than five. So just a side note, right, riders, as we move on to jump to question number 33 um, and taking a look at this one. You work in the kitchen at a summer camp and must make a batch of sports drinks for the campers on a hot day. You mix the drink in a container with sides measuring one foot by 1.5 feet by three feet. After filling the container with water, you must add two scoops of drink mix for each gallon of water. How many scoops of drink mix are needed to make a full batch? Rounded to the nearest scoop. So you've got these answer choices here and then it says rounded to the nearest scoop. So this is one of those where I look at it, right, writers, and I say to myself, okay, um, are you going, do you think you're going to be um, filling up 15,552 scoops as a someone working in a summer camp kitchen? I don't really think so. So I would definitely remove that answer choice. The other one is if you're rounding something to the nearest scoop, you're not going to choose 33.66 because that's not rounding to the nearest scoop. Just by looking at these two answer choices, this is preposterous to think that you're going to scoop out 15,000 scoops. At the same time, so is 33.66 because you're not rounding to the nearest scoop. So I've already eliminated two answer choices and now I'm down to nine scoops 45 scoops, and 68 scoops. So keep that in mind, right, writers, again, as you're looking at this work keys applied math practice test. And now we'll finish up. We'll go ahead and do our last question and wrap up this video, right, writers. Again, I hope this video is helpful and useful for you and that you feel less intimidated by what you expect to see on the work keys ACT work keys, applied math practice. Last question here. You work as an office assistant who does data entry for a large survey company. Data entry is performed in two person teams. One person types and the other checks that person's work for errors. Each two person team on average can enter the data of 520 surveys per day. A huge collection of 7,540 surveys will arrive tomorrow and must be entered by the end of the day. In order to enter all of the survey data, how many total employees working in two-person teams must work tomorrow? And then you have the answer choices given here. And so, right writers, I leave you with uh, question 34. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope this video was helpful to you and ensures your success. All right, right writers, stay tuned for more writing videos next Tuesday. Love you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. I hope to see you again real soon. All right, cruise out. Bye-bye.